This is the tastiest thing that I've ever made, guys. It's time. It's finally time. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen you this excited to try it. It's so good. Do you want to try this? Oh yeah, oh, I do. <laughs> Today on Off Script with Sola, I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite, favorite recipes ever. Mochi cake. So this is based off of the Hawaiian Ono Butter Mochi Cake, which traditionally has coconut milk, evaporated milk, lots of coconut on top that gets really nice and toasty. But this is a super riffable dish because it's technically not a cake. It's more of a custard that's thickened with mochi flour. Whoa. <sighs> Where are you going with that? This is sweet rice flour and it's the key to getting chewy mochi. The brand I like to use and the one that's easiest to find is called Coda Farms Mochico. It's very different from rice flour because if we, if you made this with rice flour, it would just be really dry. It comes from a very particular rice that's short grain and really sticky and when you turn it into a flour, you get a really nice chewy texture. So traditionally to make mochi, like the old school way, you just cook that rice and you smash it and you get this like really chewy soft dough. The modern advancement is they turn that rice into a flour so you can just hydrate it and have instant mochi. No pounding necessary. The great thing about this too is it, even though it has the word glutinous in it, it's actually totally gluten free. So this is a really great cake to make if you have friends who have dietary restrictions. I'm gonna line my pans. I'm gonna bake this in an eight by eight brownie pan because I think the best part are the corners and I just wanted, I wanted corners. But you could bake this in a skillet or a round cake pan, anything that'll fit about a quart and a half, it'll be okay. You could even do little individual muffin cups. Whoa, then you get so many edges. Oh man, that sounds good. Okay, so I, I want to line this with a little bit of cheese and butter so that we get non-stickage and flavor and the cheese is gonna like get crunchy brown golden it's gonna be delicious here i have a cup of grated pecorino and to that i'm gonna add some mild chili flake you can use whatever you've got aleppo gochugaru if you just have like the classic chili flake just use half as much it's gonna get a little bit too spicy so i'm just tossing it through the cheese oh black pepper that's good too yeah this is a good place to add some fun flavor Okay, so now that that's nicely tossed, I'm gonna coat my pan with some softened butter and then line it with the cheese. So this is gonna help it unstick and add flavor. Whoa, double duty. I always butter my pans with my hands. If you use a paper towel or a brush, you lose so much butter to the paper towel or the brush. Butter's expensive, man. I want it to stay on the pan so I can eat it. My pan is buttered and now I'm gonna use a half a cup of cheese to line the pan. So that's gonna be about half of this. Just sprinkle, sprinkle. It's gonna look like a lot, and it is, because it's gonna be so tasty. Line it with cheese exactly like how you line with flour or sugar. Just put a pile in there and roll it around. Make sure you get the edges. And then there's gonna be a little leftover cheese. Just make a nice even layer of it across the bottom. I'm gonna start by making the sweet and savory corn mochi cake. I'm gonna start by shucking this corn. I wouldn't make this unless you have good corn. You wanna do this when the corn is in season and it's really nice and sweet. It's just not the same if you use frozen corn. Um, and I need two cups. One cup is gonna get blended with sour cream and that's gonna go into the cake batter. And then one cup, we're just gonna fold the kernels in. So I'm gonna start with four cobs and then we'll measure it and see if we need the fifth one. Um, whenever I'm shaving corn. Oh, I got this bowl thing happening. Should we talk about the bowl? Have you guys done the bowl thing? Okay. You could just cut your corn like this or like this, but then it just goes all over the place. So here, if I'm cutting more than one or two cobs of corn, this just makes it a little easier. I have a big bowl and then I have a little bowl and then you put the big bowl like this, boom, boom. You put your corn like this, and then when you shave it, it just falls right in there. It makes life a little easier. So when you're cutting corn, don't dig too deep. Because if you go too far down, it just gets really fibrous. So the cool thing with mochi cake is, it's not really a cake. Like normally with cake, you don't, you don't really riff. You don't mess around because if you change the sugar or you change the eggs or you change the fat, 
it's just gonna be wrong. But mochi cake is not so much a cake as it is a pudding that's thickened by this mochi flour. So you can, it's, it's like very forgiving. If you want to be softer, add more liquid. If you prefer like dense or chewier cake, add less liquid. If you want it to be a more tender chew, add more sugar and add more fat. You got a lot of room to groove. You can have a lot of fun with this. Oh yeah, I'm doing this motion. This is milking the corn. So I'm just taking the back of the knife and scraping and then you can see like so much tasty corn pulp comes out. This is gonna be really good in our cake. You don't have to worry about cutting too deeply, see? We got everything out of there. There's still flavor in here, so you can um, you can roast this, make a corn stock. Clem likes to just suck on it, but uh, yeah, there's still flavor in there, so you can keep using it for stuff. Okay, here we go, more, more corn slicing. I'm very happy with this recipe. I'm super excited about it. I think that it's better than cornbread. I know that's like a lot. That's a lot to say, but I just love how you get like, it's, it's really chewy and dense, and then you get pops of corn, and the outside's covered in crusty cheese. Ah, I think it's better than cornbread, guys. It's very good. I'm gonna be making this all summer long, but you gotta use good corn. It really does look like there's like corn milk at the bottom of the bowl, and that's super flavorful, and you do not ever want to miss that stuff. I'm gonna pop this in the blender, then let's see if we have another cup. So yeah, we definitely have more than a cup, but that's fine. I'm gonna save all of this to fold into the batter. Don't waste the corn milk. It's like very important. Every drop counts. <laughs> okay, there's corn inside my glasses. Okay, because this isn't a real cake, it's more of a custard, you can really play around with whatever liquid you're gonna to use to like hydrate the rice flour. So for this one, because I want it to be very corny, I'm gonna make a little corn puree with some sour cream and a quarter cup of cheese. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And I'm gonna save this cheese to go on top at the end, get really nice and brown. The sour cream is gonna add like richness and tang. All right, cool, I'm gonna blend this now. Okay, so the key things you need for your mochi cake is along with your mochiko flour, you need liquid to hydrate it, fat, which we're gonna have in the form of melted butter, eggs to hold it all together, sugar for texture and sweetness, and salt. And then you can really play around and get really crazy and creative. The main thing is to remember that if you need enough sugar and fat for it to stay nice and springy and moist, if you, if you go totally savory and leave out the sugar, it gets dry very fast. Like it might be fine while it's warm, but as soon as it cools down the next day, oh, it's like a rock. So I'm gonna start by whisking up my eggs with my melted butter. The butter's like cooled slightly so that we don't curdle our eggs. You could also use olive oil, use honestly whatever fat. You wanna go for like a super coconutty one, use coconut oil. I think you could probably do a really cool savory one with chicken fat. Whoa, I'm sorry, this will not be very good vegan because the eggs really add a lot of structure, hold everything together. If you leave out the eggs and you just cook this with just the rice flour, it won't be terrible, but it's gonna be more of like a spoonable, chewy pudding, which that could be good. I think that this might be one of the most riffable recipes yet. So like, please, please go have fun with this. Okay, we are gonna whisk up our eggs and then I'm just gonna whisk in the butter until it's nice and creamy. You can really do whatever you want here. Get crazy, get creative. This is a good starting ratio. You know, of flour to liquid to egg to sugar. And then from there, it's really like, there's no limit. The limit is your imagination. If you want a little more fat, if you want a little less fat, if you want more sugar, if you want more liquid, you can totally play around with this. Uh, swap out some of the flour for cocoa powder, make a chocolate mochi cake. Chocolate mochi cake is actually, I think it might be better than brownies, honestly. Swap out some of the mochi flour for some cocoa, add some chocolate chips, dust this whole thing in butter and cocoa. Oh. Do some brown, dark brown sugar, it's so good. For this, I'm using white sugar because I want a really neutral sweetener so that the corn and the cheese and all the other flavors come through. But unlike a cake, you can use any sweetener because there's no like leavening happening. You don't have to freak out. So you can make this with honey. You can make this with maple. 
I made one with golden syrup and it was so squishy and the top got super crackly. Like you can really experiment and have a really good time with this recipe. So in goes the sugar, whisking it up. Now some mochi cakes have baking powder. I personally don't put baking powder because I like it really dense and chewy. If you want to put baking powder, go for it. Add a teaspoon, get crazy. Now I'm gonna add, this is my sour cream corn mixture. We're just gonna whisk it in. So if you think about it, this is just like a custard. We have some eggs, we got some sweetener, we got some dairy, and we're just adding mochi flour to it. I'm gonna add salt and our mochi flour, or our sweet rice flour. Now, because this is gluten-free, there is no fear of overmixing. Mix it up thoroughly. You, you don't have to worry. You, you can mix this all day and it'll probably make it better. The thing when you're using gluten-free starches is you want to make sure you don't undermix because you don't want to have like a lump of starch in there because after you bake it, it's just going to be like squeaky and a little bit gross, honestly. So it's actually really important to make sure you get in there, make sure it's evenly mixed, nice and smooth. You could even do this whole thing in the blender blend up the eggs. Like once you get that puree done, throw the eggs, the sugar, the mochi flour in there. It'll be totally smooth and perfect. It's not going to work if you don't have a high speed blender because it is a very thick batter. But if you've got a Vita prep, you could just mix the whole thing up in there just like a crepe batter. Now all we have to do is add our corn kernels and our batter is done. It's so simple. I like it really dense and chewy, but if you want it lighter, you can just add add more cream, or add more dairy, add more liquid. The main thing I think to remember is you wanna make sure there's a good bit of fat or it can get a little bit dry. That's why I've got sour cream and butter in there. I found that as long as you remember to have a good bit of fat, you have a really nice texture. And you wanna make sure you add your mix-ins once your batter is nice and smooth. So just add it at the end, like now. This looks really nice and creamy. I bet you could also just griddle these up like pancakes. Whoa, that sounds good. Oh, whoa, hold on, I have a really good idea. So I think this is better than cornbread. So imagine making a corn dog, but instead of dipping it in cornbread, you dip it in this mochi batter and fry it. Whoa, I think that might be the greatest thing ever. I'm gonna have to try it later. I don't have a hot dog or a stick right now, but maybe it'll be a Instagram special. Okay, here we go. Plop it in. I'm gonna definitely make that corn dog. Or maybe just instead of a hot dog, a mozzarella stick. And then you have, you got the gooey cheese in the middle. You have the chewy mochi on the outside. <sighs> that sounds so good. I think I might have a mozzarella stick. I don't know, man. I don't have fryer oil. This'll be, this'll be an Instagram exclusive. I think it'll break the world. But this is pretty delicious. Now deep fry it and stick cheese in the middle. Damn. Okay, so since there's no leavening, this is not gonna poof. It's gonna be, it's gonna, like it'll poof a little in the oven, but it'll end up pretty much the thickness that it starts out. And then we sprinkle with our remaining cheese chili mixture. This is gonna bake for 350 for about an hour. It takes a while to bake because it is very dense and the outside's gonna get really nice and brown. And don't freak out, that's gonna make it delicious. It's gonna give you this really nice crunchy con contrast to the chewy middle. Um, I like to clean up the sides because I don't want just like burnt cheese on my pan. So I just use my thumb and just let that cheese fall inside. Just get that top edge because it, it might get too dark on you if you just leave the top dirty like that. Now you know this is done when you press it and it's like feels firm and set and springs back. Personally, I think mochi cake is one of those things that you do not want to underbake because it'll just be like starch. So if anything go a little bit over, it'll be okay. Now we're gonna make the peaches and caramel mochi cake. You know how I said that mochi cake's kind of like a custard? That made me think of flan. So for this mochi cake, I'm actually gonna line the pan in caramel just like you line the pan for flan. The caramel is gonna add flavor and also prevent stickage, just like the cheese did for my corn 
mochi cake. Now we're gonna add our peaches to this. Oh, I also made this with mango. That's uh, really good. Mango nectar and mangoes in here. Uh, that's I highly recommend. Pineapple, anything, literally anything. Pan is prepared. So I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge to chill a little bit so that our caramel gets nice and set. Now we're gonna make the batter. For this one, I want caramel on the outside and I want caramel on the inside. So instead of just using sugar in the cake, we're gonna make another caramel. You can totally get creative here. You want this to be sweetened with molasses. Whoa. Maple syrup, do it. Coconut sugar, honestly, like try everything. Every sugar is gonna give you like a slightly different texture. Like I found um, the liquid sugars like maple or golden syrup give you more of a crackly top um, and a little more chew, but it will still be delicious. They'll all be slightly different mochi cakes, but they will all be a thing that is delicious. So really get creative. Here I've got peach nectar and cream for my liquid, and this is gonna be the liquid for my batter. This is so tasty, I really hope you guys make it. So I've let this cool. Um, you can have it warm or you can like fully let it cool. The choice is yours. And now because we lined it, it should just pop right out. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm gonna cut it up into little squares. About 16 squares. Okay, stack them up, yummy. Look at the how brown and cheesy the top got, whoa. And I just the best part are the edges. So that like mini muffin tin idea, I'm gonna do that personally. I need to get a muffin tin and then I'm gonna do that. I love the texture of this so much that I like to turn every cake into mochi cake. Like it's really tasty. If you like sticky toffee pudding, you could totally do like a sticky toffee pudding mochi cake by blending some dates and adding some chopped dates and then doing like the brown sugar toffee thing. It's really good. Okay, we did it. We freaking did it. One cake down. Next cake. Let's flip it out. For the peach cake, because we have this caramel here, if you want to make it in advance, you can let it cool on this in the skillet, but then you need to warm it up slightly to loosen up the caramel. So I'm going to just warm it up and get that caramel nice and warm so it loosens up for you. You know that it's warm because it'll, you'll actually start seeing it steaming from the edges. Okay, I can hear a little boublage happening underneath. It's feeling loose. Caramel bubbling around the edge. So now I'm gonna try and flip it again. If you're not eating it same day, I think the best thing to do is to flip it when you're gonna eat it so that the caramel, you'll see the caramel does something cool. It like pools around the peaches, it's really pretty. Okay, ready, flip. <laughs> we got it. Oh yeah. Whoa, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh my God, this I think, this is the tastiest thing that I've ever made, guys. Oh, so deeply browned. Oh, this is a good one. It's time, it's finally time. Okay, all right. Okay, I've never seen you this excited trying. It's so good, it's so good. Okay, okay. I'm gonna start savory. So it's like my mochi entree before my mochi dessert. You're never gonna make cornbread again. Mm-hmm. You get sweet corn, salty cheese, a little spicy from the chili, chewy on the inside, crunchy on the outside. I think it's I think it's amazing. I think it's so good. I can't wait to make the corn dogs with it. Genuinely thrilled. One thing to note though, best eaten within like two to three days. But I've never had a problem with that. <laughs> Should we go into the peach? Oh my god, so much caramel. Oh, I love it. Okay. Mmm. The peaches got really nice and tender and sucked up all that like bitter caramel. You have really nice caramel flavor like throughout. If you like caramel, you're gonna love it because you get you get actual caramel and then the whole cake is flavored with caramel. And I love that it's like super chewy in the middle. The top part, so what's the bottom now, is really crisp. 
And then you have like really tender peaches. That's oh, so good. Okay, okay, before I, I need to say goodbye because I have to keep eating this. If you like this episode, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what kind of mochi cake you came up with because the possibilities are endless and I'll see you next time here on Off Script with Sola. Now let me go eat cake. I love mochi cake so much that we actually buy the mochi flour. We usually get it online and get a case at a time. Because <laughs> one box is not enough.